آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد Study of book Al-Kitab Al-Akhlaq Wa Siyar Al-Imam Ibn Hazm Rahimahu Allah Ta'ala The Book of Moral and Conduct And this book and conduct is an essay in cleansing the souls and the moral and the behavior from any ill uh, action or ill way We'll continue from where we have stopped and uh, the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, continuing with his beautiful and profound insights, uh, he's defining the meaning of al-judu. He's defining the meaning of al-judu. Had al-jud, the generosity. Now, one of the things that when we are studying, and studying especially this book of Ibn Hazm, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, you see that uh, in his, uh, uh, you know, uh, sharing the knowledge of his knowledge and the result of his effort for years to come up with this insight that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him to. There is this concept of defining things, which is very important because uh, when you do not know the definition of the thing, you will not be able to, you know, to treat it, to define it. It's like the properties, the properties of elements, you know, you know what are the property of any element, so you know how to behave and to deal with it. So the same thing here for Ibn Hazm. So when someone, for example, asks you, what is generosity? What is generosity? Uh, of course, it's a great virtue to share, to give. Uh, and uh, the generosity, when we think about the generosity to have as a path, as a guide, it will be the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The same when you think about the generosity that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was behaving in the way of the attributes of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. However, there is certain generosity, you know, that really uh, people, they, you know, they give them like, they give parable with such a generosity as, as much it has been praised, for example, in the uh, history among the Arabs, like uh, generosity of Hatum Ta'i. Hatum Ta'i has such a generosity that uh, beyond what someone can think, beyond that someone can think, as a matter of fact, there is a story since we were young, that taught us, you know, the story of generosity of Hatim Ta'i, that one of the king in, in the small kingdom of Arabia, because al Bahrain was kingdom, as you see it today, you know, but not, uh, was more tribal, you know, uh, structure. So uh, the king, he heard about, you know, Hatim Ta'i and about his generosity. And he, he's been told that he has a horse that he loves so much. So he sent, you know, some ambassadors to go to him and to ask him, he said, we heard you have a horse and really the king loves this horse if you wanna, you know, he wants you to buy it from you. So this is the test of generosity that he wants to test and not buy it from you because they want to test Hatim Ta if he's going to give it to him or sell it. So when they came and he was like, SubhanAllah, I want to honor his guest and all the cattle, you know, the sheep and everything, they are out, you know, with the shepherd. So he didn't have anything. So he offered them food and everything. And after they, they sat and ate, they said, you know, what is your purpose of the visit? They told them, this is the story about you are the ambassador of the king to ask you for your horse. So he hit on his hand, said, you should have told me earlier because I didn't have anything to offer you. I slaughtered this horse to offer you for food. <laughs> so this is the example of generosity that has been given for Hatam Ta'i, and this is one of the uh, amazing story about his generosity. However, uh, the greatest of the generosity ever is the generosity of the Prophet Why? Because the Prophet said, uh, and have been sent to fulfill and complete the high standard of morality. Therefore, the Prophet ﷺ put you the action, the virtue within the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be submitted in the way of Allah and it flourish into the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you look at the Hatim al Ta'i, for example, actually you say this is great, but he was doing it, he was doing it as it becomes like a tradition, as becomes, he becomes the generous person. So he cannot not do it, you know, because that it becomes his name, his fame. 
The Prophet Sallallahu did it for the sake of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu did it in way of modesty, in a way of humbleness, in a way that it pleases Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, if you have, you know, some good fruit and you're going to offer it to a person, you're going to offer it in, in, in a clean plate, you're going to offer it in such good manners to have that person accept your gift, you know. So, if we have a virtue, that virtue need to have an envelope that have a recipient. This recipient will be the Iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu That everything that you can do in this life good, it has to be anchored into the way of Allah, into the way of the system of the creed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become regarded by Allah first and to will have insha'Allah fruit that you can reap from it because virtue is like a seed you pour it in, in the grain you plant it and if it is not in the system of the iman of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not going to give you anything it's going to be turning a lot of weeds and this weeds is going to be like seeking fame showing off and being under the pressure of people telling you, you are generous so you cannot help it and and actually it becomes like a very ill tradition in certain society when people they do not have money they do not have money but as it becomes a tradition if you have a guest you have to give him everything so some people they spend their paycheck the whole paycheck of a whole month in one sitting why because he said and they will be fighting certain society they will fight he said next gathering will be in my house so people know he said there's so there's other dozen who will be fighting but that person he fight so they said okay let it be in your house so he has to defeat and to be better than the last gathering in food in preparation and everything and they end up subhanallah asking money and to be in debt to just subhanallah give and feed their their families and this is reality till now till now so in this generosity so you see it becomes the generosity is like a pr social pressure so if I now do it people they're gonna talk ill about me gonna talk ill about my honor so then the generosity is a virtue that uh, believe and need to understand it within this system of the creed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here Ibn Al Imam Ibn Hazm give us his insight to understand how to truly be a generous person so he started saying and the definition of the generosity which is number 89 uh, and those who are following on the book English the supreme objective of generosity is to give away the entire surplus of your possessions so here one again so look the generosity the generosity First, when someone wants to, you know, act as a generous person, he needs to act within the surplus, not in the thing he needs. You see, that's قال يسألونك ماذا ينفقون قل العفو العفو is what remained. He have, you know, food for you, for your family, for your children. What remain? That's who, that's the generosity is going to act on that remaining one. That's the generosity. But you cannot give and leave your children in need. That's not generosity. That you're going to explain. And when you, the surplus, you're going to give it in the ways of righteousness, in the ways that it deserves to be given. So, for example, people inviting some other people to for other for these people to say oh the last gathering in the house of so and so was the greatest and that's what makes someone feel good so what you have done it's like seeking you know kind of praise and praise that's that's actually is the real so you have kind of void in a way that action of generosity and this one was not done in the, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you spend your surplus in the way of righteousness. Then he's going to give you. He's going to give you 
what are wujuh al birri give you an examples eh? to give you kind of an insight and give you like uh, you know directive on how you're going to to give it qala wa afdalu dhalika fil jar al muhtaj the best you know to give is to the neighbor who's in need so you see we're going to put it into within the way of the akhlaq so the prophet sallallahu alaihi in a hadith he said uh, he's not a believer who's like he he spent would go to bed with fully uh, uh, belly full and his his neighbor is starving you see so here we are activating our morality our akhlaq and this akhlaq which been you know founded into our belief and the relative who's poor eh? قالوا فك رقبة أو طعام في يوم ذي مصر يتيما ذا مقربة يتيما ذا مقربة an orphan that is related to you أو مسكينا ذا مطربة or a poor person needy person so is, this is in the Quran you have you have surplus give it to these people give it to the way of righteousness give it to the way of da'wah give it to the way to to have the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to flourish into the community or the society that you are in. Qala wa the ni'mati dhahiba. This is beautiful. Someone who's been have ni'mah, Allah he has gifts, and subhanAllah he lost it. Someone went through difficulty, get bankruptcy, or someone subhanAllah he was uh, you know uh, being uh, subhanAllah suffocated by death, he lost everything. That person is one of the needy people that you have to give. And amazingly, give it to these people, you give them based on their lifestyle that they had. So from awjah zakat from paying the sources or the way how to pay the zakat, is to pay for someone who was rich and he lost his fortune. And he said, when you pay this person, for example, you pay a poor. The poor, you say, the meal, is an average meal, let's say $10. This person, when he used to re be rich, his average meal is like $30. So you give him $30, don't give him $10. This is the etiquette of Islam. Huh? This is the etiquette of Islam. وَالنِّعْمَةِ الذَّاهِبَةِ وَالْأَحْضَرِ فَاقَةِ وَالْأَحْضَرِ فَاقَةِ And the one that around you, who has, you know, uh, you know, فَاقَةِ which is in need, or muhtaj, or uh, facing a di financial difficulty uh, and so on. قال, um, then he continued. And to hold the surplus from this aspect, this is, is a type of greed. This is what someone say, بخير. So if you give your money or your surplus other than this type of people, other than this type of categories, as we said, uh, the Imam here, he's given us a guideline directive to think to give to someone or to give to a cause that is related to your deen, that is connected with the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I have mentioned, you know, all what he mentioned are proved by ayat from the Quran and a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu قال, uh, to hold the sur surplus from this aspect or from these categories is part of greed, part of greed. So someone, for example, has money and he'll give it, and we're going to see. So he shared it, he said, but I gave sadaqah, I gave. He said, to whom you give the sadaqah? So to whom you give the sadaqah define it was an action of generosity or action of greed? Because when a true needy person or a true cause that need help, someone hold his hand, he said, no, these people I don't trust, or these people, this person, you should go, go work. So you, this is an action of greed and men that is going to lead to commit to, to, to an action of uh, sin. قَالَ ثُمَّ قَالَ وَمَنْعُ الْفَضِّ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْوُجُوهِ دَاخِلٌ فِي الْبُخْلِ وعلى قدر التقصير والتوسع في ذلك يكون المدح والذم. So based on these categories, the way how you use your manage your surplus to give to these categories, as we say, with the spirit to give to whatever uh, help you into the system of the creed of Allah subhanahu wa taala.
the way we have described it. Based on that, you should be praised or you should be blamed. Uh, so it's not like praised because you gave. Uh, you know, there is people, subhanAllah, they give, uh, you know, a big fortune for orphanage, big fortune for, you know, and this orphanage, for example, it's uh, named after their name or school named after their name. But subhanAllah, do these people are going to be rewarded by their donation? قال وقدمنا إلى ما عملوا من عمل فجعلناه هباء منثورا and we came to whatever deeds they had done and subhanallah we made it to be scattered like like ash into the wind why because it happened the given the donation it was effective it was it was given but it was not done in the way of iman its base it was not believing in allah its base its motivation it was not seeking the pleasure of allah its base, it was not the way to seek in the nearness of, to Allah and to contribute in the system of the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because uh, there's many people sometimes we miss when you say doing something in the sake of Allah. Doing something in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that you are spreading goodness in this universe. That is what it means. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he only instructed you the action to be done that only bring benefit and blessing to the whole universe. So doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that's the action of worship. That's how you become a good doer, a good doer, salah. But if you do it in the sake, in the way of your own self, that you're going to be the action is good, but the effect of the action does not have any good. It seems, it looks as good. So one should be praised or blamed based on these principles. Not someone who gave like a lot of money to, to things that does not have any relation with the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be praised. No, that person actually in the reality is greedy because he's a greed person because he didn't do it for the sake of helping, for the sake he gave, it, he gave it for his name or to have his name on the emblem of the thing that he gave for. And if anyone who put his surplus in any than these categories, then this is a waste. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blamed the wasteful people so you see the waste is to you the surplus in things that will not help you in the akhirah and you think that you're not contributing in the system of the society you live in to help to be a good actor and we say good actors a righteous actor in the society so that poor person, if he does not have anybody to feed them, what is going to cause? It's going to cause crisis in the society. The crisis in the society that people, they're going to be starving. Starving is going to put them into big fitna. And big fitna, this revolution, the people, they start, subhanAllah, people with no iman start to steal, start to kill. And then you have, subhanAllah, the crime, rates of crime will increase, the rates of, you know, violation will increase, the rates of all the, subhanAllah, of evil doing will increase. So people always think about, you know, and miskin is like that miskin is starving, you give him a food and he will feel good. But look at the consequences of whole society does not have that tradition, imani tradition to help the needy. Then that needy, He's going to return, subhanAllah, to become, you know, a threat for that society because of the greed of the rich person. And you can see it in the secular society. You can see it is very obvious. Wherever people they go, we, you know, fashion, follow. 
things follow, uh, new trend follow, just follow. And then what is needed to be corrected in the society, everybody, subhanAllah, is uh, heedless about. Look today, for example. All the rights that people, they want to, uh, to like glorify and to restore into the society are rights that really hurt deeply the heart of the morality. For example, this question of genders, this question of legalization of uh, uh, drugs, this question of abortion, all these things, subhanAllah, these are rights. These they call liberalization. This they call, you know, uh, you know, human rights. But it truly, it's becoming like what is going to kill the society from inside. Then, when you think about that, think of how much money being spent, how much money has been donated for these causes. Look, whatever, you know, political, someone who's like candidate or a cause like this to defend this type of rights, you're going to see always donate, donate. So people, they donate. So this is generosity, this is action of courage, no. For this is tabdeer, waste. And subhanAllah, the waste, it's not limited to the fortune, to the money. The waste in everything. The waste in the energy that Allah gave you, the waste in the ability that Allah gave you, the waste in the intellect that Allah gave you, the waste in everything that you have as skills and not investing it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wasting money, wasting effort, wasting abilities. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about Qawm Lut when Lut alayhi salam was addressing them, qala bal antum qawmun musrifun, a wasteful people. You wasted the quality of the humanity, the wasted, the meaning of the dignity of the humanity. You wasted, you ruined it, you killed it. The next generation, they're not gonna have, subhanAllah, a balance where to turn to, to understand who they are, who they are. It's a big question, Allah. I mean, we know, alhamdulillah, we are Muslim and we think that we know everything, unfortunately. That's, that's you know, part of our heedlessness. But in reality, we need to be humble and to try to learn. When you hear, for example, people coming to Islam or thinking or trying to find the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most, you know, subhanahu crucial question, people, they don't, they want to know who they are. I mean, they've been misled, they've been guided, and then they find out, like, subhanAllah, living a life, a depressed life. I said, in this life, you know, supposed to be like that there's no another way the other way is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why la ilaha illallah therefore there is no way only the way of Allah who lead you to to your honoring of yourself and to your inner peace qala wa ma badalta min qutika liman huwa amassu hajatan minka fa huwa fadlun wa ithar this is beautiful now, when you have the surplus and you give it, but now you are giving away from the thing that you need. This is greater than generosity. This is fadlun wa ithar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal, when he uh, praised the people of Medina, the Ansar, qala wa yu'thiruna ala anfusihim wa law kana bihim khasas. The Prophet sallallahu uh, he asked, uh, he had uh, a traveler, he asked, who, who will honor this, this guest? So one of the Ansari said, me, Ya Rasulullah. He took him with him. And he entered to his wife, he said, we have a guest sent to us by the Prophet We have to honor him. She said, okay, that's fine, but we need to do things because we only have the food for the kids. He said, do anything, you know, just some food, the, you know, some water boiling and then on the boiling of the water they will feel like the food is going to be ready they will sleep and they give and they make it like the whole home to be like a little bit dark and they present the food to the guest and she was so happy as it was dark he thought that he's 
he's eating with him and he didn't have any food. So they honored their guests and he left, you know, before Fajr, happy and everything and making dua for them. But in reality, he didn't eat. His wife he didn't eat and the kids, they, they, they slept without, without food. So the next day when he came to the Fajr, the Prophet Sallallahu min sun'ikuma. Allah was amazed from what you have done to that, uh, yesterday. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. If you read the reason of revelation, قَالَ وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خصص. They preferred other than their own self, despite the fact they are in true need. So this is beyond generosity. But not, of course, hurting yourself. This is when it happened this way. This is, there is in you, you know, a quality that's greater than generosity. In one of the Ghazawat, and among, subhanAllah, the companion, it was Ikrima ibn Abi Jahl. This is amazing, because when you think of Abu Jahl, he's the head of kufr, the disbelief. Ikrima, his son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him to Islam. And some of the scholars, when they give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ He extracts the living from the dead. One of the example, how he extracted Ikrima from a dead person who dead in his heart, who is Abu Jah. So subhanAllah, uh, you know, he was someone who truly sincere in his action. And in this battle, you know, they were, subhanAllah, laying down, you know, wounded with other companions. If I'll go back to the story, I can give you all the names, but the moral of the story. One of the companions of the soldier brought them water. So he gave it to Ekrim and he said, my brother needed more than me. He's been, you know, I feel like he's in pain since, since a while. Please give him. So he wanted to give to, to, the, to, to the second companion. He said, no, no, the one laying down close to me, he's in need on better, more than me. Please, you know, has him to give him. They were, subhanAllah, laying down wounded in their last breath, maybe five or seven. When Asaki, the one with the water, get to the last one, he'll find him dead. When he went back to Akrima, he'll find him dead. And all of them, subhanAllah, died. By an action of ether, they preferred their brother on their own selves. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a principle, a divine law. Who shield himself from the covetousness and the greed of his own self. Those are the successful. So there is a shuh, the shuh inside, subhanAllah, when someone is fighting, he wants to give, but there is something inside is pulling. No, don't do that. And the shuh is worse than al-bukhl. Al-bukhl, the brother, respect the sister, the one who has money and he does not want to give it to anybody. But a shuh the one who has money and he does not even spend it on his own self. Someone who has a lot of money, but he does not even buy a shirt. A shirt, he does not even buy a shirt for himself, clean. I have been told that a story back home. Someone he's, you know, he's like a normal market, you know, the market, like the open market, they sell uh, vegetables and spices, you know. And there is a guy who, who, who's been, has a small booth in that market for like, you know, four years. All known poor people, you know, they always be nice to him because he's so needy. I mean, he looks needy. So one day, you know, there's a bank. <laughs> they came to him and they want to give him a surprise. They brought him a new, a brand new car as a gift. So everybody said, this person, what happened? I said, oh yeah, this is the best client we have in our branch. He has the money that he never touched. Tons of money. 
and we want even he does not even come to us to take just make deposit deposit and we want to honor him so he said it was the biggest disgrace for this person even his children didn't know that he has money his children they've been you know you know struggling and they don't have food and they don't have things and this person he's like a millionaire imagine a bank comes to give to someone a free gift a car especially in in a country like ours a car so that person subhanallah allah disgraced him in the end of his life and everybody hated him even his kids said do you have all this money and you don't even and we're not telling you to give us your money just subhanallah look allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to see the athar the, the traces of the gift of Allah upon you in your appearance in your appearance he wanted to dress nice he wanted to look nice he wanted to be clean that's subhanallah the sunnah the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa therefore al-ifaru is greater than the generosity this is deeper because imagine the, the, the story that I have told you of the Ansar the Al-Ansari and his, uh, his wife it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it to be a Quran made it to be a Quran and that's reflect a deep great quality of Iman this type of people that you can build with them a society build with them a community this type of people that you can trust to build a brotherhood and sisterhood this type of people they truly can you know uh, be prosper in the way and uh, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Ifaru is greater and is better than the uh, uh, generosity and if you have someone surplus and he, he didn't give that's action of Bukhul but if someone for example he said you know I have you know oh Allah I need that so this person you should not blame because that is right but he should not praise because he didn't do an extra action to be praised for this one is in the midway in the middle way you know someone he only has he said uh, can you help I said well I have only my food and the field food for the kids you're fine you're good you're great alhamdulillah nobody will force you and no one impose on you to go beyond your way and this is subhanallah I'll, I'll finish with this uh, reflection in the way of Islam we have two levels two level what we call al mithaliyatu wal waqi'i al mithaliyatu is idealism and al waqi'iya is to be practical and uh, realistic realistic so Islam uh, its relevance and universality it does not impose on you to be an idealistic person which is happened in the uh, worst kind of a practice in uh, other faith which is led to their crookedness for Islam for example I'll give you an example someone subhanallah uh, in case of uh, of Al-Qasas in case of Al-Qasas someone was killed they bring the family Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the, the power to hold in the hand of the family to decide on the killer. So there's two options. To do the qasas, which is mean soul for soul, or to forgive the person. The qasas here is what is the practical, the realistic action. Nobody will blame you. This is your right. This is being practical. He, they is like a lady said they kill my son i cannot see this person he took his life this is by the law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his life need to be taken this is practical and this is subhanallah how relevant the deen is however allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourage you to be a greater into your into your standard of morality and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say why not forgive Forgiveness, it requires a lot of effort inside. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So there's always idealism and realism in the salah. 
the realistic that Allah invites you for is to pray five times only, five times. Like the Bedouin, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm not going to add anything on that. And when he left, قال, in صدق صدق Allah. If he will be truthful on what he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit him in his mercy. However, how many nafila we know that you can be uh, able to do? The more nafila you do, the more idealistic you become in the way of your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But being realistic and, and you know, contained into the fara'id, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already embrace you in his rahmah. And Allah will not say, for example, or anybody else should not say, oh, he does not do enough nawaf. No, if you are a believer doing your five prayer, you are good. You are very good. But Islam, in a way of its relevance, it helps you to uh, explore more potential of yourself, but does not impose on you those exploring or those expanding your ability to do better or to do more. And this is the same thing here. If you cannot, you cannot give, you don't have, nobody will blame you. As long as you paid your zakat, which is the obligation. The rest, when you give, you become a leg in a journey of idealism, which is the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill on us the love of gen the generosity and help us and guide us to have the ithar as great quality of iman. Jazakumullah khairan wa barakallahu. If you have a question, inshallah.